Hello folks, and welcome to this week's episode of Spill Your Beans. This week we're actually crossing our medium and going from television over to radio personality. Uh, you get to meet Aaron Levy from the University of Fraser Valley. He runs Civil Radio and uh, well, he's been doing it for about 10 plus years now. He'll get into all that detail. Uh, but what I want you to know is he's sharing with you today an opportunity uh, to learn and grow within the industry of documentary filmmaking, uh, whether it's production and broadcast. Uh, so make sure you have your pen and paper out today because he's not only gonna tell you how to learn these things, you know what, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the episode too. It's a story kind of of not giving up. And we do this in all our episodes of showing you why we go through and do what we do. But for Aaron, he wanted to pursue music. And he realized at a younger age that uh, maybe he wasn't the most talented person music-wise, but that doesn't mean he can't be part of the industry. So he started the radio, uh, got involved there. Uh, he started a music award show in the Fraser Valley, uh, Fraser Valley Music Awards. Um, it'll be his second year this year. Uh, he's taken on the initiative of getting other bands, uh, open mic set up. Uh, and he's also a part of the Envision Concert Series. Uh, so it just lets you show that, hey, maybe what you dream or what you hope isn't a reality, but you can create it in other ways. Uh, so yeah, never give up. And it, if you don't find an opportunity, create it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy this part of uh, Spirit Beans and we'll be back shortly. Welcome to today's show of Spill Your Beans. Uh, today we have Aaron, local A-list celebrity. Z-list. What did you say? Z-list. Z-list celebrity. Well, why don't you tell us who you are and then I'll tell you where I got to know you from. Sure. So I'm the, I'm the station manager at CIVL 101.7 FM. It's UFE's campus community radio station based out of UFE in Abbotsford. And our job is to provide a, a voice for the alternative, provide an opportunity for people to hear content and make content that they won't hear elsewhere on the radio. So things like local bands, local events, nonprofits and charities, things that you're not going to hear about on commercial radio all the time. Okay, and how long has this radio station been going? We've been on FM since September of 2010. We've been making podcasts on the internet since 2008. It's been an initiative that students at U of V were working on all the way back in 2003. So it's been a long journey for CIVL. UCFV back then. At the time, yeah. yeah. And, and before that, the Fraser Valley College, obviously. My dad went there, yeah, Fraser Valley College. Wow, I didn't know it's been that long. 2003, yeah. Well, what I really like what you said there is you said we at Civil Radio have been. Uh, you owned it. You said it like it, it's part of you. It's part of our identity is that we're a group. And we're, a lot of nonprofits are like, essentially every nonprofit is like that. That, you know, there may be an executive director or a manager in charge, but really the group is beholden to the stakeholders and the board of directors and the membership as a whole. So it's always a team opportunity or a team, a team uh, initiative. Just like what we do here. For sure. So you've been going for about 10, 11 years then? So the station's had content for just about nine years now. And uh, we've been on FM for coming up on seven years next September. Okay, so I want to get something on civil radio. What do I do? Well, you can check out our website at civl.ca. Let's say, I mean, what are we talking about? Are we talking about music? Uh, music, we report new music in our charts every week. You can find out about uh, the weekly CIVL charts and the national charts every week at earshot-online.com. It's actually a, a website that was started by the folk over at CJSF, that's Simon Fraser's university. Magnus Tevold is the station manager there, and he started this national chart reporting system where all of the campus community radio stations will register uh, who played, who was played on their station every week. And uh, so when you go to earshot-online.com, and you look for CIVL, you can then find out what our tracking hours are, our address, and you can send musical content to the station that way. But I mean, let's say you're uh, just a, a local community member or a person like yourself, a proprietor of a business that has events that they want to promote. You can email your events to events at CIVL.ca. Graham St. Deloy is our program manager. And at events at CIVL.ca, he takes those events, puts it on our calendar on CIVL.ca. And then we also make on-air promos uh, from those listings. So those will go into rotation for free for nonprofit or uh, community events on 101.7 FM. So those are two ways you can get things involved or you can get involved with us. 
Um, if you're just a local community member and you want to put together content like you or the volunteers working on this show, uh, email programming at civl.ca. That's Graham's email address or mine is info, I-N-F-O, at civl.ca. Let us know you want to get involved and we will provide all the training necessary, uh, all the background, all the resources for you to be able to eventually, if that's what you want, host a, a weekly show of maybe an hour in length, whether it's talking about coffee or beans or community involvement or whether it's playing punk music for an hour every week. Uh, those are all services that we do provide at CIVL and our job is to make as few barriers or obstacles as possible to regular everyday community members, whoever you are. Uh, to, we want to provide a, an accessible opportunity for you to engage with community media. So that's why we provide you with all the training, give you all the resources for whatever it is you want to talk about. It's got to abide by the rules, but that's why we're there teaching you about the rules in session two of three. All right, now that was a big mouthful, mouthful. there. And so earshot, civil radio, um, websites, emails, we'll have all that information uh, on our show towards the end, on our website. Uh, we'll share your website as well. Um, now you went from, well, basically asking you how do we get involved to giving people a job at the station in you an hour of training. Jobs, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> the way you speak, you very alliterated, you're, you're out there and you're able to, so how do I get lessons? I mean, I'm not necessarily going to be able to teach you to be a different person than you already are. The idea is that you come in with what, what you have to offer, and we will help you to structure that in a way that it follows the rules. Now, if you want to be able to do a better job of conducting an interview or presenting information, we're actually, this is a, a next level kind of engagement. At CIVL, we're basically telling you how to pa package what you put together into maybe how to edit it or maybe how to structure a, an hour-long program. Um, but if you want like higher level training, we're, we're engaging in a project right now, and another one of those email addresses, if you want to get involved, is dialogues at civl.ca. And we got granted $50,000. Over the course of the next four months, we're going to host three cycles of training sessions, production workshops. So uh, we are paying volunteers to take a workshop that gives them interview training, production skills, uh, maybe storytelling development. Um, and we're going to pay volunteers to take those workshops. Then we're going to provide them with the, the, the materials, the tools necessary, the equipment required to produce productions uh, based on topics of their interest. And then we're going to host a speaker series at the end of the cycle where we'll bring in a popular speaker who we'll have a public event with and we'll showcase a bunch of these productions, which will also be broadcast live on CIVL. But the key there is that we're paying volunteers to learn how to uh, develop their skills with regards to production, audio, interviewing, media in general. And we're going to work with them as, as CIVL staff uh, to create individual productions, and then we're going to showcase those to the public. And we're going to pay you to do that. So dialogues at civl.ca is the email address, and Gordon Kadich is, uh, is the coordinator of that project. He hosts a podcast called Cited at CITR, which is the UBC station, and they're broadcast uh, all over the country at different campus community radio stations. Well, if you don't have any volunteers yet, uh, you got one now. And that's great. Yeah, I hope to have people like you. And If we can even uh, help cover and see as it goes along, we'll gladly do that for you. You just let us know, and we'll... I, all the information he's provided there, which is a whole bunch of it, Sounds we'll right. have that for you because this is a great opportunity. You're offering young up-and-comers a chance to grow, develop, and learn with the station, but with all the equipment and everything there. And somebody has been doing this for a while now. Well, now, and, a, and a whole team of people who have been doing it for a while. We hired three people to work on this project. And that's, and you're, I mean, that's why they granted us $50,000 to do it because of how engaging and how, how supportive it is to the local community. Now, I know we've focused really on civil here, but I originally met Aaron through an Envision concert series. Uh, it's a series that happens from cafe to cafe. Now, I'm not going to give any cafes a plug here. We're just going to say cafe to cafe. And uh, he showed up one day. Now, we got talking and then there's another event happening and oh look there's Aaron again so what got you into one community and the giving like I we're gonna get into the story of why you stayed with music a little later but this whole co concept of helping and engaging uh, younger musicians I mean it's a lot of fun for one and uh, again accessibility wise you know we're not gonna run into uh, Fleetwood Mac in our, in, our, in our local grocery store, most of us across the world, right? Uh, but there's tons of talent right around the corner all the time. So I think it's really important to support it. And you know, you don't get to be in Fleetwood Mac if nobody gives you a chance early on, right? So I, th I just, it's a pleasure to find out about new music, local music. It's a pleasure to have a, a, a community 
where you can see music on a regular basis, which is why we appreciate the opportunities that you've brought. Well, the Envision Concert Series uh, solicits for, for bands to, to play for pay um, all through the summer. Uh, so my involvement with the Abbotsford Arts Council led to CIVL providing a, a weekly host for that series, the Envision Financial Concert in the Park and Coffee House Series. Uh, and, and I think it's just important that musicians in the Fraser Valley have an opportunity to play, get paid, represent themselves to the community, and practice what they're trying to do on a professional level. And more and more, uh, year after year, you see more Fraser Valley musicians who are on a trajectory to be professional in those realms eventually. Now, I don't know if you guys caught this, but he was very humble in that. Did you notice how I was talking about he, how he got involved, how he developed it, but he pushed it, oh, no, people are approaching us with these ideas. You know, unless you create that avenue, they can't approach you. So I'm going to ask you one more time. What made you want to develop this and build this up? Like, I, I know you, this is to the root of it. Are you a musician? I play, I play a little bit of music. Uh, I'm, not, I'm nothing special. Uh, I, I sing my songs, and mostly I sing other people's songs. That's all right. Um, I mean, uh, so I, 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 I was born in Toronto. Uh, grew up there. It's a big city. Not a lot of opportunities for people. I booked my first show when I was 18 years old. Um, what kind of music? It was, uh, it was punk rock and metal, basically. <laughs> right. the, it was an anti-prom night uh, the at voice. Queen and Bathurst. So, oh, I was only playing bass. So I was playing bass in somebody else's band. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, uh, it's important to provide a, a venue for, for different musicians, I think. And, and uh, it, it's important. A lot of people don't know how to build connections in that way. And you'll, you'll have your music and you'll have your content, uh, but you won't know what to do with it. And so, I mean, I guess I've always been more of a media person. I've been, you know, the kind of guy who writes reviews and things like this. Before he goes on further, that was a key thing you just said there, is reaching out. Um, unless you ask for help or let people know you're looking for help or other connections or networking, you're just you sitting in your basement or in your studio trying to figure it out on your own. So we're going to cut to commercial here. But before we go, make sure you reach out. There are people out there able to help you, civil radio, ourselves, your friends, family. There is somebody able to help. So make sure you reach out. All right, we'll be back. It's good coffee. That's not bad, eh? All right. Well, before we left there, we were talking about uh, reaching out. And if you have an idea, there's a lot more people that are able to help and support you, so make sure you, you ask for it. And right here, they're offering something at the radio station and university, so we'll get more into that after. But speaking of university, did you guys start something with the sports teams recently? So we didn't last semester, but this, this semester we did. Uh, we, we have started broadcasting again, uh, UFE Cascades men and women's basketball games, and we've done this for the last five, five years, actually. This is my 10th season. I'm really excited about it, wow. of hosting uh, or doing play-by-play for uh, for Canada West and uh, youth sport level basketball. So that's a passion of mine. You're doing play-by-play. -play. Is it also on civil radio? Is it on any other? Where uh, Canada West TV is okay. where all of the uh, Western Conference Canadian University uh, teams are broadcast. So you can actually sign up there for a membership that gives you uh, access to on-demand uh, broadcast from the last year and also to, uh, to, to log in live and watch as the games are being played. The season's about half the, way over, half the way done now. Did you just say watch as well? Yeah, it's a live stream of the, of the broadcast uh, on video uh, and, and on demand. It's also uh, offered up at CanadaWest.tv and then at CIVL.ca you can hear the podcasts of the audio that we broadcast on 101.7 over the course of the season. Oh, okay, okay. So this is a uh, of the radio, the actual commentating. This isn't of the game itself. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm doing play-by-play -play of the video. Oh, okay. Dr okay. When you when you log into the website, but if you're only listening on FM, you'll only hear my audio. Okay, and then on there you see you so doing the. Yeah, I'm is, not on camera very much. Is the game are the games on camera? The games are yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can you can follow through and watch along and then you, maybe if you look at the UFE Cascades Instagram you'll see a couple of the slam dunks uh, from Nav Baines uh, uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks he, he had a pretty big weekend against McEwen. I caught the last one actually it was like uh, a pass from one end to the other and it was oh my, I heard you commentating. I did on uh, Friday night he had a great <laughs> slam dunk and I gave a great call to it and then on Saturday night he had an even better slam dunk. And unfortunately, the I call. flubbed the call. I flubbed the call. Y yeah. Couldn't do it. It was Couldn't good. Do it. <laughs> nope. My, my mind was elsewhere, I said. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's sidetrack back to music here. Um, there's an award show I remember reading about. 
How did that get to start? How does somebody hear about this? And so the Community Radio Fund of Canada is a wonderful organization that redistributes funds that commercial broadcasters earn. Uh, the, the government mandates them to, to redistribute these funds. So it's really actually beneficial for community media like ourselves at CIVL. So they've funded this creative dialogue project that I mentioned. And again, create, uh, dialogues at CIVL.ca if you'd like to get involved and get paid to learn about broadcast and production. But uh, the Fraser Valley Music Awards was funded also by the CRFC, the Community Radio Fund of Canada. They gave us $50,000 last year. And with that money, we put on an awards show. We had about a couple hundred people at the awards show. We gave out 12 awards. We nominated 57 artists for those awards. And we had 109 submissions from different musicians or music groups representing about 300 different musicians. So this year, we're kind of crossing our fingers, hoping we get funded for year two. And there's a lot of extra funding that comes in after you go to a second year because some projects uh, or some funding bodies won't fund you for a first year project or a first year event. So now in year two, if we're successful with the CRFC again, uh, then we'll be applying for some more grants. But, but ideally, the, the goal here is to be able to award about ten four thousand dollars prizes to winners of the Fraser Valley Music Awards. So last year, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a fun, really fun time. We've already had success from uh, some of the winners who have gone on to or are going on to bigger and better things. Uh, St. Soldier, somebody who you're familiar with, yeah, yeah. he was recently interviewed with uh, Bobby Friction on BBC Asia, yeah, where they asked that. him about his Fraser Valley Music Award for Hip Hop, which was a huge thrill for all of us at CIVL and at the Community Radio Fund of Canada. They were glad to hear that too. So does it have to be somebody established in music to apply for this award? We or? had people who applied, uh, who were nominated actually for awards and all the music, all the music oh. they, they applied with. So not applied, nominated. They were not, they not only applied, but they were nominated oh, okay. in their genre category and all of the songs that they had used for their nomination uh, were actually recorded right at the CIVL studios with our production director. So it does, you don't have to be established. The idea is we're here to take uh, up and coming musicians and to provide them with a jumping off point to do bigger and better things. Listen, make sure you guys uh, listen to that because not only are you applying or submitting, you actually have the opportunity to go get it recorded in a studio with you guys there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, how can you put that one down? So, hey guys, make sure you get the information after the show of how do you nominate or get yourselves involved in this because not only are you getting a chance to go in front of people, but you might get to record your own song. Yeah, we're hoping that uh, we're going to see awards where uh, notable recording studios will be offering $4,000 worth of recording time to winners. Yeah. Um, and that's even fo above and beyond what we do at CIVL. Okay, so we're in a community talk show here. Um, it goes national in some stations, but how does our community get involved and help you with this? With the Fraser Valley Music Awards? And when I say our community, I don't talk about brown community or white community. I talk about the community. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, look, if you log on to CIVL.ca, you'll find out all the different contact info and all the different projects that we engage in from uh, providing students with an opportunity to, to earn credits for class by uh, doing work at CIVL, which always tell your teachers about if you want to uh, get classes, get class credit for doing something at the radio station, if you want to volunteer with us, or if you want to be involved in any of our projects or find out about events in the community, CIVL.ca. It's pretty much all laid out there and you can get all the info there to contact us or just stop by the university at UFV in Abbotsford at the new student union building. We got a gorgeous new studio up there. Um, Civil Radio, is it also, you have Chilliwack campus? We have a Chilliwack Mission campus. We've campus. been working towards broadcasting in Chilliwack yeah. for about four or five years now. Yeah. It hasn't been in the cards yet. Coming up the road, maybe by 2018, we'll be broadcasting in Chilliwack, but you can get us fine in Mission. Hey, what about, there's a UFE in Chandigarh, India, isn't there? And www.civl.ca <laughs> services them excellently. Oh, yeah. Our but no, we've talked about ways, actually, just recently we were talking about ways that you could potentially, uh, we could put little um, li equipment on campus in Chandigarh so that people can be tuning in uh, on the campus. Amazing. Okay, now, you know, we've plugged events, shows, awards, the school, the games. Um, let's talk about you, all right? The music scene, uh, pursuing this. Uh, tell me your story. So, I mean, yeah, I've just always been interested in music. I've always, I was interested in sports a lot, writing sports, doing reviews for music and albums and, and, and live performances and movies and things like this. I did a co-op when I was in high school with the newspaper at York University, and I also volunteered at their radio station at that time. 
Um, and I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up, so to speak, after high school. Went to university, took a philosophy degree, buy some time to figure out what I want to do. And I got involved in campus radio in a big, big way when I was at the University of Guelph. Uh, my first job while I was at university, my first real job, I guess, was uh, being a bouncer at a bar, something I did so that I could get more involved with the music community, learn how to get involved with venues, how to book, how to promote, things like this. So is the passion coming to be a personality on radio? Is the passion coming to help promote musicians? Yeah, or just to be with music? It's, it's to be around music, but to be, you know, you, you, you can be around music and then you can identify something about a certain type of music or a certain band that you think is particularly interesting. And I've always been the one I can call that, you know, I like to think that I can call that guy's going to be really successful, whether it's in sports or music or anything. I like to think of myself as a talent scout. No, I'm not. But I like to be a part of that, and I like to be able to support people who I think have the opportunity to go further in life and, and, and with their craft. So, once again, this is an encouraging story. This is somebody who said he wanted to be in a band, musician, yet he's promoting the upcoming musicians. So there's a no quit here. People You're, who are better than me. Uh, I didn't say that. I did. Uh, <laughs> so this is once again an encouragement then. So you're sitting here saying that, hey, you know, you might not succeed at being particularly in music as the performer that everybody watches, but you're able to help performers. You're help creating and breeding uh, performers now. You're recording for them. You're putting them on stage. You, uh, where does that drive come from? I mean, yeah, I've got, I've got a cousin. <laughs> who was a Juno award-winning musician, and growing up, my mother used to always encourage me to, uh, you know, help talk to him. He'll give you some <laughs> ideas. He'll help you get get involved in things, and he'll support you. I went over to his house one day in Toronto, and I, and I was telling him what I was up to, and he he encouraged me, saying, "Local music, you know, support local music, support people who don't have an opportunity yet." And I guess that stuck with me, and then that was something that encouraged me to continue on with campus radio or with local events and things like that. In smaller communities like Abbotsford, again, it makes a big difference uh, to, to see the kind of support you get from the community because, you know, it seems like you're far away from the big stages. So, uh, you know, any, any type of push you can give somebody to get to the next step is really effective. You know what, I think we're going to end this uh, on that note right there, is that push, that opportunity. Um, if it's not there and it wasn't there for you, create it. You know, make a way for the next generation to have a way of pursuing their dreams. Uh, you might not have made it in your dream, but you're able to help other people's dreams become a reality. And that's what you're doing on Spill Your Beans? Uh, we're trying to help people that help people. We're helping the helpers. And uh, I know you're a helper in community. Uh, I've seen you in many, many places. I'm not going to blow hot air up, you know, uh, yeah, but uh, amazing, amazing personality. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, before we go, all those websites, we will have them up there because this opportunity of recording, volunteering, learning production, and being paid for it doesn't come around very often. So thank you for creating such a thing for this community here and joining us and spilling your beans. It's dialogues at civl.ca. Thanks so much, Jazz. I really appreciate it. No problem. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that segment with Aaron. Uh, I hope you had your pens and papers out. Uh, all that information that he did provide, we'll also have on our website, on our social media, or you can actually just get in contact with Civil Radio, ask for Aaron, uh, Google it, There's all the information is on their website. And uh, the key part here is that documentary filmmaking. Uh, hope you got all that information because I know I'm signed up for it and uh, we're going to be learning a little more to get better at what we do here. Uh, we're learning uh, every episode so yes it's a great opportunity and not only is this an opportunity to grow but you can even make some money here from what I hear so yeah make sure you sign up for this class and uh, thank you Aaron once again for taking time out of your everyday life and joining us on set today